I don't think now is a good time to pull the plug, but at what point in the season do you sack heights? Asked Tyrus Rose, CF97. Let us know what you think, Fire fans. When is the right time to pull the plug on heights? Is that time coming soon? Is that time not anytime soon? Noah's saying after summer. Tyrus asking, would you give him the summer window to try and fix things? Noah saying, yeah, I don't see much of a point to can midseason. Just give him one more shot. And in the summer, if nothing changes and we go again to the offseason, then uh, you can make an assessment on whether or not to retain Heights for a second season, for a fourth, for a fifth season for Heights. It'll be only Ezra Hendrickson's next season, second season as a Chicago Fire coach. But I don't see that happening either. I don't you chat. Do you agree with this assessment? Do you see Ezra Hendrickson and Georg Heights somehow being, you know, somewhat attached? And if Georg Heights goes, so too will Ezra Hendrickson. I just can't see really bringing in a new voice as the general manager and also that voice not getting to choose his coach for his team, for his style of his team that he wants to play as well. And then you think about the technical director. You think about all the other things that have to work in tandem with this situation. And that makes me think about one person one thing, one play that could be the move that could help. That, that, there's one play that you could retain Ezra Hendrickson, move on from Georg Heights and still have your whole sense of identity for Chicago Fire and then also improve. And I think you guys all know who that answer is. It's Garth Lagerway. If Garth Lagerway wants to return from the to the gas works of Aurora, I'd make that call at about three o'clock in the morning while looking for 1,000 brown M&Ms to fill a brandy glass or else you won't go on that night. Chat, what do you, do you, would you agree? With, is it time to lure Garth Lagerway out of Seattle? They just won their first CCL. They're one of the premier teams in MLS. Do Chicago Fire really have any chance whatsoever to lure Garth Lagerway away from that and to a new project over here in Chicago. Garth Lagerway ha runs an amazing, wonderful tight ship over in Seattle. And we're thinking that people think that he might want to leave that well-oiled, well-run ship that he's the one responsible for to come over to Chicago where there's problems, where there's been infrastructure problems for years, where there's been uh, struggles for years. There's been uh, teams that just have not been able to compete for years. Meanwhile, he's coming from a team that competes year in, year out. Year in, year out. Seattle is in the thick of the league. I would hope that he's up for the challenge and that he does come to Chicago Fire and he comes and changes this culture of what we have here to a culture of what Seattle has. So a culture of winning. A culture of fan culture. Of the of the 12th man on the field because there's so many fans in the stadium cheering on the men in red. That's what I would like to see. Is Garth Lagerway the architect of that vision? I think so. I don't see of any architect of that vision out there. I don't think we have the architect of that vision in Georg Heights. Yes, he can go and get a guy like Shakira. Yes, he can go get a guy like Jairo Torres. Yes, he can go bring in a, a, an easy to do trade like Casper Pushabilko, but does he bring in the Giassi Zardes? Does he bring in some of the great trades that Garth Lagerway ma makes? Does he bring in some of the great moves and signings that Garth Lagerway makes to build that team in Seattle? I don't think so. And for me, that means I'm ready to move on yesterday if Garth Lagerway is available. If you can slide into Garth Lagerway's DMs, you do it two hours ago or at three o'clock in the morning, just like Del Preston said over on Wayne's World. Dago saying, I have a feeling Mansueto won't get rid of him, though. He might reassign him to Switzerland at some point or on a different role with the team. That seems possible. Joe Mansueto does have the, have the ability to hide some of the mistakes over in Switzerland. That's the beauty of this FC, FC Lugano team. Let's you hide some of the mistakes that you maybe make in MLS, like a nacho ice cream at Not the right ice cream, not the right flavor of nachos for Chicago. Doing okay over at Lugano. Kevin Thomas saying, honestly, I don't know. I'm so sick of this two year cycle culture that we've created here. Front office and coaches getting two seasons and starting over and over again, then more built in excuses of rebuilding and gelling for the first year of new leadership. That said, can't continue. And to be bottom and keep your job? I legit don't know what to do at this point as a fan. It sucks. Hoping 
this team hits one of those late night strides, uh, one of those late strides through summer and carries that into the playoffs. Doubtful, but would be fun. I agree. On that, it would be doubtful, but would be fun. I'm hoping for that. I think that the Chicago Fire, you remember that graphic that the MLS always shows, always shows where the team goes up and down in the standings? I think the Chicago Fire right now went up and then went down to the bottom. Do you think that there's going to be a little bit of a resurgence? I'm hopeful. I think so. They just got to start scoring goals. They got to figure out how to put the ball in the back of the net. Does that mean a formation change? Does that mean Ezra has to consider maybe switching to a 4-4-2 low block? Something that we discussed with Joe Lowry on the podcast last Wednesday. Go check a look at that show. It was fantastic. It was awesome talking MLS tactics with Joe Lowry over on Backheeled and The Athletic. You can check out his work. Civics teacher at Mitch saying, how do we lose Georgie Mihailovic and end up with Casper? This to me is damning. Heck, even CJ Sapong is doing better with Nashville than I remember him doing with us. I'm usually an optimist, but I feel the hope fading with every non-win that goes by. I'm feeling you, civics teacher Mitch. How did we lose Georgie Mihailovic? Was Georgie Mihailovic always destined to leave the Chicago Fire? If Giga Kreitz was here, yes, I think so. If, if Garth Lagerwey landed and said, I want to keep Georgie, I think that's that would that's a possibility that could have happened. But Georg Heitz was retained. Garth Lagerwey was not brought in. Can we see that change here in the next few months, in the next year or so? Gosh, I really hope so, Fire fans. Let us know in the comments below if you agree. Would you love to see Garth Lagerwey here at Chicago with a brand new project, given all the money of Batman Sw of Bill of uh, 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 all the money of billionaire Joe Mansueto to help reinvigorate this franchise i think he is the prime architect in mls that joe mansueto if he prizes soccer he will lure that man here and here's the thing about that garth lagerway wants to be president and gm how do you do that when you just hired your new president chicago fire just hired their new president in the last year or two if, if, if they're gonna have to move on from her as well in this situation should they bring in a Garth Lagerway, is that a price that has to be paid? Could she maybe move to a different situation inside of the organization or as well, maybe upwards, NWSL, MLS, what have you? Of course, talking about Ishwara Glassman, Crean, the president. Unpopular opinion, though. Blaming everything on Heights and the roster is wrong. Yes, the roster isn't great. Yes, there are glaring issues that Ezra's working on, but at some point, eight games without a win and barely any goals from open play also speaks on the quality of our coach. So says Trilogy XX over on Reddit. Our attacking play involves route one balls, route one balls from Omsburg and crosses. That's it. No one but Gaston shoots outside the box and we can't hold possession for very long. We, it's a good point there. We need to get more shots from outside the box from other than Gaston. I'm talking Shakiri, who's known as a long shot extraordinaire. While Heights is partly to blame, so is Ezra, in my opinion. So says Trilogy XXX. Cooler Blue chiming in saying, Ezra didn't teleport into his position. He's also a Heights hire. So ultimately, it's a different route to the same conclusion. Wiki was also a height sire, and for what it's worth, the team struggled offensively under him as well. Whether that's because the roster didn't have the offensive talent or the coaching staff can't get the talent to click, ultimately, it's on Heights. I also, I thought in 2020, Heights' model was basically to become the first MLS team that scouted internationally well enough to develop and sell players on the international market while investing in the academy to fill out the rest of the roster. Now. The first part of that looks like it's just not happening. There's still some prospects who might pan out, Duran, possibly even Federico Navarro, though we paid a little too much in transfer fees to get much of a real return there. But too many of the other names have been outright busts, not Joe Alisade, I think, or frankly, are just overpaid for the production level. Ivanov is one of those. I think Cooler Down with some excellent examples. Brown Down saying, Barrett's is another example. Good take on the current situation. Although it's still early days with Ezra, my doubts have been firmly established over the last four games. Cooler Boot re uh, responding, I say, I think that part of the issue might be the roster's youth. I'm not sure how practices go, but some part of me has this fear that he's basically having to spend half the time of them running through all kinds of basic drills that you see in an academy, instead of the kinds of things that you'd actually expect from a pro soccer club at the top levels. 
Again, it becomes a chicken and the egg thing with the roster. But regardless, the coaching staff and all the players are ultimately under Heights' purview. Do you agree with that, chat? I think that's a great assessment. Gostov Erling saying, what's Ezra to do when his starting wingers are Ivanov and Herbers for most of the for so, so far, most of the season so far? When Heights saddled him with young players and most positions as well, and key positions, who make young player mistakes. Think Miguel, uh, think Miguel Navarro over on that left back. Think Federico Navarro. Think Mauricio Pineda. These are young players that are being relied upon in some key spots on the field. And then you have other young players who can pick up red, reds and yellows and then are suspended and, when, and, and also injuries occurring to key players. How can you deal with that? It's Coach Ezra's job as a coach to deal with that, I believe. I think we all need to sit back for a minute. The team is mostly healthy and we finally have Heights' as starters on the wing. Let's just see what happens over the next two months before we actually pass any judgment here. Gosta Burling actually having a reasonable take there as well. I agree with that take as well. I think that we do need to give them a little bit of time. They just got their starting wingers in 11 games into the season. That should take the heat off of Shakiri a little bit and greatly enhance this offense. This offense needed those types of breadwinners to maybe to be able to start pushing it into upwards and onwards and getting into goals in the run of play. Because that's what the issue has been. And we saw what Jairo Torres could do in 15 minutes of work. It, it, imagine him with a full 90 to work with. He would definitely help create a few more goals and draw more intro, draw more, attract more defensive pressure to help free up spots for Shakiri and the other men in red to be able to create chances and score goals. Overlap saying plus this plus Shakiri hasn't come in guns blazing. He hasn't exactly. Shaq's got two to three defenders on him at all times. He's never really been a pace guy. He doesn't have the many pieces around him that can exploit that pace. That space that he does, uh, that, that him pulling those three, two to three players does create. True, but you're telling me he, hasn't, he wasn't pressured in the Premier League or Bundesliga? In general, the majority of his creative passes have not had the proper weight or touch. You can tell me he's capable, but he can't blame kicking into the defender's knees on the pieces around him. I'm hopeful and expecting him to find a groove with Mueller and Torres. And this conversation goes away, but he needs to do more work to connect with them versus expecting them to connect with him. I think that... I agree with part of this take, but I also think that Shakiri is putting in the work. I am watching this man on the field put in work and struggling, sometimes looking for help, looking for the guy around him, looking for the guy to be making that open run. I'm also seeing Shakiri make mistakes. I'm seeing uh, sometimes when they maybe don't make that run or they do make that run, that Shakiri still on that follow up makes the mistake, passes it, doesn't weight it correctly. I've seen both things. So pair his mistakes with the team also not maybe gelling with him and what he wants to do, how he wants to go forward quite yet. And we might have, you know, severe issue, but uh, I think a severe issue that can certainly be resolved once we all come to terms with what needs to happen to be able to create a successful goal scoring opportunity. Smith saying, not disagreeing with there, just feels like Shaq and some guys on our team versus him being a piece of some really great teams is uh, kind of the conversation here. Heck, he struggled to break into the Liverpool midfield at times. Of course, he can handle that pressure, but there's only so much he's going to be able to do. Like others have said, Mueller and Torres getting in. I am hoping we see some of that weight taken off and we'll see him becoming far more lethal, which I wrote and, and then realized you said in your last sentence, which I forgot. I read laugh out loud. Blue Blue saying, that's fair, but Shakiri was never expected to be the guy the way he is with the fire. The way that he's expected to be in MLS, no less. Well, he might have been that during the Stoke City days, and those were fun. But the big questions, in my opinion, are about Shakiri coming into the season where how many minutes can he play and how can he adjust to being the center of attention on the pitch in MLS? I'm not ready to pass judgment on him so far, but I'm just not, also not sure that he's lived up to the role he's being asked to play. On the positive side, I will say he does look like he's got the right attitude and here that he can come to play, unlike, say, Iguain in Miami, where that guy might as well have just shoved a pack of cigarettes in his armband for all he's cared. And so uh, Shakiri does look like he gives a damn. Shakiri looks like he wants to fight for this. He's out here to play. He's not only fighting for Chicago Fire to win. He wants to be at the World Cup. 
come November. He, 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 Shakiri is working his butt off, and that's why he wants success. And when he has these struggles, when the Chicago Fire are not sitting in the right part of the table, he knows that reflects poorly upon him as well. And also the lack of goals reflects poorly on him as well. He knows this, and I know, I know, I could see it, that he wants to flip the script and change that very, very soon. All right, fans, hopefully we can root Shakiri on to bigger and better things. Should the Fire renew, renew Georg Heitz's contract? We're not so sure. Is he the issue? Is Ezra the issue? What is going on, Fire fans? Greatly appreciate you guys hanging out and talking in the conversation. Get it going below. Let us know. Should they bring, retain Georg Heitz, or is it time to move on? Is Garth Lagerway the answer? Is he even available? Probably not, but you better believe I'd be knocking on his door. Especially if I have billionaire bucks like Joe Mansueto that I could just shove in a wheelbarrow and wheel on over to Seattle Stadium, knock on the door, leave it out there, say to, to Garth Lagerway, please come to Chicago. More in Chicago. Bump. Done. Bring him here chat fired up footballers thanks for hanging out for more chicago fire conversation we'll catch you on the next video guys greatly appreciate you guys dropping any super thanks joining as a member liking commenting below does a lot to spread the fire on youtube so we'll catch you guys on the next one have a great one fired up that's all folks